My name is Martha Russo. We are at the Galleries of Contemporary Art at the University of Colorado, Colorado Springs. And I have the honor of uh, showing four new sculptural installation pieces and one piece from 2016 for this exhibition. The name of the exhibition is called Sejura, which is in Greek literature, it, it means that there's a break in the middle of a verse or a sentence. That overarching idea is really what all of the pieces have in them, either physically, metaphysically, or metaphorically. So the first piece when you come into the gallery is called pensum. Pensum is the Latin root for a word that means obligation and something that you feel you need to do. Pensum came out of this idea that there's something fecund and sort of burgeoning from the belly out, almost like a pregnant belly. And the forms that I made started with this idea of a belly sort of burgeoning from the wall. And it was very much inspired by a piece that Anish Kapoor made that I saw um, a piece in the mid 90s called When I Am Pregnant. And that was really the inspiration for thinking about too how the pieces would be installed with sort of this seamless wall around it and they would just be emerging. The different types of forms that came out of the process of making them were a complete surprise to me because I had this idea of this initial kind of pregnant belly and then they morphed into other types of forms which again flows back to that idea of sejura, where there's a pause or a break between what the piece actually looked like. Is it a male form? Is it a female form? Where would it be located in the body? And one of the pieces, the last piece we, I made in this series of eight acrylic forms, I actually pushed the form through the acrylic and had an actual break in it. And it's actually one of the strongest pieces, I think, in the show. Another piece, uh, pivotal piece in the show is this piece I'm standing next to, which is called lacuna, which also is another word in Latin that means there's an actual physical break in something. The piece is two different components that make up one large sculpture. It's the first time I've shown the piece. I've been literally making it for 30 plus years. Um, some of the components, especially these tendrils here, sort of this vocabulary where they have an appendage that comes to an opening. Those are pieces I started making in graduate schools. And I actually started making the pieces, they were test tiles for me. A little small form that I could make rather quickly and stand it up in the kiln because it has a point at the end. At the end of grad school, I had like 300 of these little test pieces and I thought, you know, I kind of like them. There's something to them. And I wasn't sure what it would ever be or become, but it led me to make thousands and thousands and thousands of them before the fall of my MFA show at CU Boulder. So it was the start of the series called Nomos. The first time I showed it, um, I had it on a curved wall in a corner 
because the pieces started to look to me like ocean flora and fauna. And I felt like I want to give people that experience of being inundated by whether it's a school of flood or a bed of kelp. I wanted to give them kind of this mixture of feeling like they could be at the ocean or could be on the forest floor. And that sort of purposeful ambiguity is about giving people the time and the space to come up with their own sort of interpretations of what's going on. Another new piece in the show is called Incubo. And Incubo is uh, the Latin root word for incubate. That piece came out of endless and continuous hours in the studio precipitated by COVID. And what happened was I had made a round dish to basically capture a piece that was falling apart. I have, I have a practice, part of my practice is taking everyday objects and dipping them in porcelain slip and making a coating with them over the object to basically um, memorialize whatever that object is. So some of the Petri dishes have to directly do with interpreting what the COVID virus looks like physically, how the body responds. Others of the dishes are totally just experiments about the beauty of the alchemy of using ceramic materials with other materials and then getting them in and letting them react to the heat of the kiln. So for me, Incubo was this incredible way of sort of filtering what was going on during isolation and COVID. And then also just sort of rejoicing in the incredible variety and capacity that combinations of materials with heat will represent and also the addition of cold materials too. The other piece in the exhibition is titled Shoot. It's probably the most literal title I've ever had in my life. I usually pick words that are from the root meanings of actual words in our English language. But with shoot, I want it to be more direct. And the references are, it looks like a shoot. It's wider at the top. It's an aluminum shoot that comes down to a smaller opening at the bottom. And on that shoot, there are very, very white pieces at the top that are beautiful porcelain, only fired once, they're incredibly porous and fragile. And then it gets towards the bottom and it starts to change color into this sort of warmish, amberish color. And then there's a big glut of pieces that holds them from falling off the chute. So the idea is that shoot is, I feel the sense of aging in my body as I make these very, very labor intensive sculptures and you kind of culminate with this idea that ultimately we're all sort of going back to the earth. We're, we're starting with this gravity that pulls us back. And really it was my way of kind of embracing this idea that through life that's gonna slowly decay over time, there's a whole different beauty that happens along the way. And it can feel devastating and you're out of, you, you don't have control of it, which you don't. And I think for me, one of the biggest concepts in the way I work and what interests me is this idea that we just have to pay attention and sort of embrace these different stages along the way. And then I'm just gonna talk a little bit more about the idea for the piece called Phase Shift uh, Waddling. And the piece came about, it's 10 years ago now, 2013, we had a massive flood in Boulder County. And I was quite interested in how they were re rebuilding the canyon and what kind of materials they were using. And I kept seeing these tubes of hay everywhere. Well, I started talking to the construction folks and um, I learned that they were called waddles. And I saw truckloads of them literally being delivered on the, in these massive flatbeds. And so I started taking pictures of them and I kind of liked how the forms looked. 
And I always, whenever I see, saw a waddle staked into the ground, it very much had a sense of tissue of, of like the body. It looked kind of painful. And I thought to me, these waddles, like what they need is to be freed and give them a, a whole different sensibility in life. And they were these beautiful abstracted forms curled up on the side of the road before they staked them in. And I thought, that's, that's what I wanna do. I wanna do something with them. So long story short, after tons of experimenting, came up with a system on how to free the waddle and make all different kinds of shapes to activate space. So I couldn't be happier with this new installation. This is the first time showing it here at Goka in the end center. And with the beautiful architecture of the end center, it allowed me to really activate space in a way I never ever could have dreamt of that gave the waddles this very animated sense. What was wonderful too about the end center when I proposed that the waddles would go outside and then come back in. And as you can see, there's a number, there's a few bigger ones in the gallery space in a very different way than what's happening in the end center and outside. It just has given them, the waddles, the sense of their own creatures in some ways. I purposely wanted these as a backdrop to Lacuna so that people might make that connection with these earlier pieces and those forms. And also the installation, how to put them up. I definitely have a that's that gap here and a gap here on the floor, which again goes along with that idea of a break. I feel very honored and really graced to be able to show these new pieces here at Goka and in the End Center. And I have to say, you know, I've had, I've been a practicing artist since 1996 now. And so, you know, it's over 30 years where um, I've been in a lot of different shows. I've been really fortunate, but this has been one of the best experiences of my art career at this point. And I think the key was Lene Bowman Cravens and Abigail Kopensky, and the two of them really understood what I needed to do these installations. They are arduous. There are a lot of details and they just gave me lots of space and time to make sure the installation went up the way I was hoping it to. And they put together an incredible group of students and staff, and it couldn't have gone better and been more fun. So that feeling of people believing in me and believing in the work is what really um, made this show come to fruition. So I'm, I'm really forever thankful.